da, da, today is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, June 16th. Getting close to the official summer, although it's already hot, hot, hot. <clears throat> okay, this should be a fun one. If I can get it all out, I'm going to call it uh, the American Privilege. Let's see, we'll see about that. So perhaps you recall, was it 10 years ago already? When they started to bandy about the term white privilege. The most ridiculous uh, pieces of propaganda, misdirection, and distraction. Trying to get white people to feel bad about the color of their skin. Which, when you dig into that, you realize the very utterance of that suggests some sort of hierarchy is ridiculous. Anyway, if you fell for that one, this probably isn't for you. But instead of getting triggered out by white privilege, I kind of use that specifically. Take that uh, that energy that was just created and apply it to what we're going to be discussing today. Because this isn't about white privilege, and it's not really about privilege. But I like to use that word. It's about opportunity and responsibility. Which one could extrapolate from the word privilege. And I'm going to uh, confine the discussion to America for multiple reasons. One is it's easiest to talk about the environment in which you are most familiar and from which you come. So this very likely applies to other OECD countries, which is an acronym to refer to more rich, westernized, industrialized countries. Well, let's limit it to America because you're probably American and therefore it's easy to extrapolate and understand the greater context. So what is this American privilege that I'm speaking about? Well, if you're listening to this and perhaps you've listened to something else that I've talked about, you understand that not all is well in the world. And in fact, there is much happening around us, both visibly and invisibly, in regards to dark occulted forces that are seeking to dismantle and uh, destroy our, our way of life. Now, some people refer to the process in which you come to realize this as an awakening process. And I think that's a beautiful word. I don't have any problem with that, but I would like to um, <clears throat> build on that and use a slightly more descriptive verb. So, awakening can happen and still be, uh, what do I want to say, you can still be kind of lazy about it, okay? And I did a video, a couple videos, regarding whether or not we were really waking up. And so the word we're looking for is we want people to activate. Activation is when not only are you awake to what's happening, but you are now implementing the necessary steps and taking the right actions in order to produce change, right? Service to others in order to modify our predicament to help others, etc. So anyone can wake up in bed, but to get up out of bed is to activate. And to wake up is obviously the first part. Okay, so we got the term American privilege, when I'm, which I'm referring to as an opportunity and responsibility. We're applying that to our awakening process, where we are beginning to de-occult or unhide, to put it another way, to make more clear what is really happening and the forces at play here. And we're looking at it specifically here in America and our opportunity and our responsibility. So, responsibility part. Well, when you start to understand what's really transpiring in the world, just on a visible level, you can say, I mean, you can look back and see, okay, our military is going in and wrecking havoc and slaughtering innocent people for what? Usually for the extraction of uh, natural resources under the guise of national security, but we're not really unsafe and we're just raping and pillaging the land and slaughtering the people. 
and you could look at the reverse and say, okay, he's a, what we call lesser developed, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with their way of life, but just in terms of the language that we use, so that we can uh, juxtapose, say, third world and first world countries. Our people of a third world country coming in, raping and pillaging the United States as natural resources and taking them home. No, they're not. So, for all intents and purposes, we're the most powerful and the most heinous country out there. Obviously, there's other examples, but we're going to keep it localized to America. Therefore, we have a responsibility to clean up our act. I mean that most literally and metaphorically, as we can recognize the uh, the harms that we are creating. So that is our American responsibility. Our American opportunity. <clears throat> This is what you might call our privilege. First and foremost, if you haven't heard me say it before, you'll hear it now. We are all slaves here on planet Earth. Now, we may not desire to be, and those that are the most awakened and activated can make a very strong argument that they are in fact not mind controlled and therefore not a slave, but we're talking about a very, very small amount of people. And when you zoom out and see what's transpiring on a national and global level, it quickly becomes obvious that our freedoms are extremely limited and more so by the day. The difference is we are relatively more free here in the United States than in other countries beyond any reasonable doubt that is due to our Second Amendment. This video will not get into that, although it's a very good one to look at later. So we have relative freedom. Bring it back to some uncomfortable terms for you. Americans would be the house slaves, whereas other countries, other people, look at those in China, right? You can see slavery way more overtly. They would be more like the field slaves. The difference between the house slave and the field slave was what? It was a relative degree of comfort, right? Uh, better food, better living accommodations, but you were still a slave. And, and unfortunately, the majority, and I mean the vast, vast majority of Americans have sold out to be a house slave. Sorry, I know that sucks, it hurts to hear, but the fact that uh, you go gaga over your new iPhone that's made in some sort of technological sweatshop overseas, and you are enveloped and absolutely consumed by consumerism and our relative amount of comfort has completely blinded you from the fact that none of your thoughts are your own and you are completely manipulated by dark occulted forces. I'm sorry, you'll have to do some research into ascertaining how this all, how that all works, which is what I've talked about and what I strongly encourage you to listen to Mark Passio. But at the end of the day, we are the house slaves. Now, therein lies our opportunity. So, whereas, who knows, some uh, African bushman in Africa uh, is not as connected, say, to the internet. And I know I did a video on, is the internet potentially our greatest tool? And therefore, doesn't have the ability to access torrents and tons and tons of information in order to enlighten oneself educate oneself, and then learn how to take necessary steps and actions so that you may help those around you. He's kind of living localized out in the bush, serving a very important purpose within his own demographic and culture, but you can see his relative opportunity in this, in this instance in regards to uh, technological availability. Notwithstanding, I'm not a big fan of tech, but let's use the tools we have at our disposal. Uh, furthermore, he may not have the ability to create a YouTube channel and reach other people. You see where I'm going with this. This in no way discredits his way of life of living out in nature. In fact, he's got something figured out in the modern era, era of shamanism. Let's not digress. Or let's use another example um, of just your average run-of-the-mill person in Nigeria or China or uh, Sao Paulo, Brazil. Do you immediately imagine that they are living on the same level as you are here in the United States, given your basic understanding of uh, comforts and distractions, right? Do they have the same access to easy electricity, you know, 
uh, power for all their modern conveniences or even, jeez, the traffic here, Westville, uh, the ability to have clean water at their disposal, etc. What does their free time look like? How much time do they have to spend just providing food for themselves or, you know, all these kind of things? No, you're going to say, we're America, you know, everything's a little bit nicer here. We have more relative free time, even though we wasted on distractions that have been put before us as if they're our own conjurings when in fact we've just been dupes from uh, the sports that we watch, not play, it's okay to play sports, sports that we watch, um, all the TV that we fill our minds with, all that time we could be spending educating and enlightening ourselves here in fact we're absolutely wasting it. So we have a relative, high, relatively higher degree of comfort and convenience here in the United States compared to other countries. And again, I said you could extrapolate this out to other industrialized Western countries as they probably have the same things at their disposal. So therein lies our privilege and our opportunity here as the house slaves. We've got access to better tools, better resources, and I am not uh, discounting or discrediting the fact that we have that largely because of what we're doing to other people uh, in other countries. Be that not as it may, okay, since we, you and I, can't change that fundamentally here and now, but we can come to understand the opportunity that we have in order to educate ourselves and then other people because ultimately that's what will bring about change massive non-compliance people standing up and saying no but in order to reach that conclusion you have to go through the hard work and not everyone around the world has the um the same feasibility to engage on that journey because some some poor bastard might have just had his son blown up uh, from a bomb that we dropped on them in one of our goddamn drone strikes, right? They're going through a, a different uh, level of shit. So we have this opportunity now that we've carved out ourselves as, as top dog of the world. We're acting like a real asshole. We have created a relative life of luxury for the average person here in the United States. Therein lies our privilege Therein lies our responsibility to awaken to the truth of what is transpiring, to activate ourselves first and foremost, to learn about ourselves from the inside out, therefore we can understand that which surrounds us, and then to take that information and that knowledge and transfer it into the third part of the trivium, into the output of it, into the action part which would be wisdom, which could be thought of as knowledge that is expressed through right action. And so, <clears throat> you might be asking, so what, what, am, what are you trying to tell us here? This is, this is my version of a public service announcement. You know, the more you know. It's a clarion call for those of you out there that are, are listening to this. If you are hearing my voice, then you have in some way been brought to this message and you're on the right you're on the right path this is merely my declaration in order to provide uh, a new outlook uh, inspiration i seek to empower and inspire other people to do as i am doing which is to do the internal work where you have to route out all that shadow shit <clears throat> you know and, the, and there's never I'm always drawing from my mentors, paraphrasing them. There's never an arrival point. But to begin that process, to admit to yourself that you have been wrong, that you have been lied to, to see the world for what it really is, both physically, in the visible sense, in our five sense perception, and then to begin to intuit and feel and learn through your invisible faculties, whether you want to call it you know, your heart, heart-based heart intelligence, your third eye, your first eye, etc. To come to understand what is happening in truth in the invisible realm and then to take that information, 
process it personally, and then as a result, come to a better understanding of truth, and then take the necessary right action. Because at the end of the day, if you wake up and and you're like, wow, I understand everything that's happening, lottie fucking da. It's like having a party for one. Cool, you got the uh, the music and the, the finger food and whatever, the keg, but it's just you. Is it really a party if it's just you there? No, you want you want all your friends, you want all your neighbors, whoever, to come over and enjoy it with you. Hence the importance of service to others, that upon awakening and taking the steps to activate yourself in order to uh, distribute the information to help other people wake up to the truth that surrounds us. That's really the point of all this. And so at the end of the day, it's important for us to see our privilege here in America for what it is. It might be fleeting. It's very likely fleeting. And there'll be a changing of the guard. But we have this opportunity here because we have relative freedom compared to other people. Think about your gun ownership rights here versus Australia versus Canada or, you know, communist China. You have the ability to defend yourself against tyranny when it comes to that. You know, heaven help us, it does not come to that sort of like um, hot revolution, but it may. So within that bubble of freedom as the, you know... As the house slaves, right? We got access to the the butter knife. We can go stab the master that's, uh, you know, enslaving us. That is our opportunity and what I had called our privilege, which is uh, a trigger word to get your emotions bubbling to the surface so that you can take that energy and apply it to something, you know, more fortuitous here. So, take this opportunity to recognize the position we're in the time and place that everything is happening, right? Everything is speeding up as we see the uh, Agenda 2030, the Great Reset. Now that the world is connected, not that it wasn't before, but connected in a technological sense, things can happen very rapid. The rollout can be very fast. That uh, applies here as it does to the other side of the world. So time is of the essence. And because you live in a relatively free relatively comfortable place here in America, it is incumbent on you to take your free time, carve some of that out, begin the process of the internal work, come to know truth so that you may process that internally and then externalize that to help other people awaken as this is the true service to others. This is the true great work. And in so doing, you build not only momentum, but a larger mass of people energetically and physically that can help to turn the tide and you know produce the positive change that we all really seek.